Hey all, good evening. Hope everyone doing good. Okay, so in our last class, um, maybe on Monday's class, we had discussed about uh, what is cloud and why we should learn the cloud in the current market. Okay, and uh, what are the benefits of using cloud computing? And what are the popular cloud service provider in the market? Okay, so uh, if you have got some ideas about cloud, can anybody of you just tell me what is cloud in your term? Don't don't uh, like read uh, definition from the internet or from the book or what do you think? What do you think? What is the cloud? You need your term. Can anybody just tell? Sir, cloud is an online storage platform. It's, it's totally wrong. No, it's not only the storage platform. Yes, not. Yeah, accessing something uh, through by internet. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, on demand services. It's... Yes. It, it's whatever you are telling, guys, it's part of the cloud. It's kind of uh, one on junk you are telling. But what, I, what exactly the cloud computing is? We talk about right uh, in our last class. A cloud is a virtual computing platform physically located in a data center of different geographical location, which can be accessible through internet. This is what the term, suppose I say D, but in your term, what you can say, it is a virtual machine. You can say directly it's a virtual computing platform or a virtual computing machine located some lo place where we can access the computing power to internet. Like you need to first understand what exactly the cloud is and and how uh, they it works. Yeah. Please go okay. mute. Uh, yeah. Uh, good. So, so we understand what is cloud is. So, the, the guys who joined uh, today's class, they can go through my previous uh, video, the recording session, just go through and get some ideas on the cloud. Okay. Now we got about the current cloud who is uh, you know, dominating in the market, what is the AWS, what is the SARE uh, in the market we discussed already, right? Now, we'll see, as we are seeing the type of clouds, we discussed the type of cloud, like the public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. Just remember this, guys, okay? We have already discussed the basics on the public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud. The rest of the things in detail we'll see in our upcoming classes. Everything when to go for public cloud, when you should go for private cloud, and when we should go for hybrid cloud. So if you think about the current market scenario, the situation if you think about uh, the most of the banking sector, most of the banking sector, the data the banks handles are more sensitive, right? Are more critical and more sensitive. So what they need, they will not go for public cloud. There is a chance they may feel like, see, there are companies who are going to public cloud also. In public cloud, there are lots of security, the service provider, they claims like we provide 100% security to your data, but still the companies, they're reluctant to go to the public cloud. Okay, so instead what they can do, they can create their own cloud, like the private cloud, right? They can go with their private cloud and they can use it. So when we talk about the private cloud, what they have to do, they have to purchase their own hardware. They have to start up and maintenance everything they have to do it. That means they have to set up their own data center with all the hardware, all the maintenance activity, all the organizations, all the computing resources, all the 
storage resources of the uh, processing everything security data handling data maintaining everything hardware maintenance all these things patches updates all they have to maintain it's kind of it's kind of equal to opening one data center though they are not physically get the data center they'll virtually go and get the private cloud where that will be dedicated for the that particular company to use just see one real time example uh if you go for a paying guest right pg what will happen there you will see their rooms will be single sharing room two sharing room or three sharing room something like this okay in case of public cloud what happens the computing platform the platform will be one there will be multiple tenant will be using the same computing resource that means i have my laptop suppose i made my laptop as the cloud service provider i'm so i'm, I'm suppose a cloud service provider i have my laptop which is having heavy resources with equipped with heavy resources and i have partition with suppose 10 partition and i just want to rent those areas in my laptop to 10 people so what they'll do they will just take one partition and give me rent for that exact one partition what they're going to use it that is what in the market is in the cloud market in the public market they are using it or else if you want to get <coughs> full control of that laptop or full control of the house so or either case what you can go talking about the pg right you can go and get your own house individual house and pay rent for that and that will be again controlled by you you have to take maintain do the maintenance of the house you have to uh, book water tanks for the house or you have to uh, you know uh, electricity bill all these things will be maintained by you only the rest of the things you have to fix it in case of any issues that is privately handled equipped by you only but if your pg are saying rented house uh, rented not single house if it's going for pg what you have to just use the service being provided by the pg owner whatever the service you are using paying the rest and the same thing is a hybrid cloud which is the mixture of the public and private cloud that means the organization the company they decide what kind of applications should go to public server public cloud what sort of things or data or applications should go to the private cloud normally companies they store their databases the critical informations, the sensitive informations into the private areas, right? And the rest they keep in public cloud. In that way, what they can do, they can save the cost. Why people, why in the market, why all organization companies are moving to the cloud to save the cost, to do the faster delivery, right? In this case, what happened if you are planning to open a small company? You can quickly go to the cloud market, just rent for whatever you want, the computing power, and start up a company. Within a few minutes, your company is done. Your everything or your infrastructure will be with you. You can set up the company. Not the company. You can set up the required infrastructure for the company. You can set up the required infrastructure for the company. Within the fraction of minutes, right? Okay. So that's the type of clouds. <clears throat> now let's see what is the type of or type of services being provided by the cloud service provider in the market. So type of services, we have the IAS. Remember whatever the services, type of services I'm going to tell you, these are the interview questions they will ask you in the interviews. And you need to understand clearly then only you can provide a solution for your organization you can be a solution architect okay you need to understand 
what exact the service is required for what requirement. What is this IAS? It is infrastructure as a service. It provides only a base infrastructure. It provides only a base infrastructure. End user have to configure and manage the platform, deploy application on it. That means they are just giving you one infrastructure. So you are going to design and set up your own. Think about you are going to buy an apartment. There could be furnished apartment and will be unfurnished apartment. So infrastructure as a service is kind of unfurnished things. We are getting the base infrastructure. On top of that, you are putting all your requirements, all your need. That means you have to set off your own configuration. You have to set up, you have to manage your own platform. Then you can deploy the applications. So guys, we are all going to work on the applications. What is the application? It is the software, it is the API, which the customer need, right? For the customer we design, we develop, then we deploy into some environment, right? Next one is SaaS. First one is called IAS. Second one is SAS, that is SaaS. SaaS is nothing but your software as a service. <coughs> software as a service. On-demand software managed by vendors, applications, virtualization server, storage, etc. Like software as a service, like Google. Google is providing Gmail account. So gmail.com is a software. It's a web application. It's a web email application, which we are using it. That is a software being provided by Google. So Google is providing the service that is software as a service. So on-demand software managed by vendors, applications, virtualization. I'm just giving a basic example, day-to-day -day example, what you're using. But there are other services being provided by the cloud, which we are using, like the Salesforce, Salesforce, SAP. There are many, there are thousands of other softwares, even lots of softwares, millions of softwares are there, right? Which the companies or service providers being provided. Similarly, the cloud service provider also provides the software. Okay, software as a service. The next one is PaaS, that's called platform as a service. So platform as a service is called, it provides a platform allowing end user to develop, run and manage application without complexity of building and maintaining the infrastructure. So what is the difference here, IAS and PAS? Instead, in case IAS, they are giving you just a skeleton. They're giving you just infrastructure. You have to set up everything there. All the networks, all the platforms, you have to set up everything there. But in case of PAS, platform as a service, it provides a platform allowing the end user to develop, run, and manage application. Means they are giving you infrastructure already. All networks, all details, everything will be there. You have to only work on the development. You have to focus on the development. You don't have to focus on the maintaining the infrastructure. So you can directly use that platform to develop your applications and all. Example, AWS Beanstalk, you will not understand these kind of these words now, but don't worry. Whenever we move forward, you'll, everything, whatever is written, will come to know. Okay, don't worry about anything is written here. Even though you don't understand, ask me. And as I said in our last class, let's make this class as interactive so that everyone can enjoy the classes, right? Let's make it interactive. And as I said in the first beginning of the classes, if you have started the class, be with me for next three months. So your dedications, it's, it's my duty to take you to that level so that you can achieve your goals. Even though I just take you, you have to give your 100%. 
without your 100%, the effort I put is nothing. Okay, so your efforts should be more than mine. Okay, now these are the three types of services which mostly being provided by all the service providers. There are few others, it's called CAS, that is what in the market uh, recently is co comes up, that is called container as a service, which is nothing but it provides a container-based virtualization. So these container things we will learn in the DevOps class, so that DevOps is required for an experience, some set of expertise level. So I'm not talking about this, you will not understand this concept, okay? But just named it as container as a service. It provides a container-based virtualization. You'll not understand these terms. Please don't put in your head now. Uh, okay, just remember these three services, IS, SaaS, and PaaS. This is three basic services most of the service provider provides. The other one is the FAS, FAS, which is called function as a service which it provides platform allowing customer to develop, run, and manage application functionalities like AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Function Lambda. We are going to learn in this class in our last of this course, okay? Now, what is AWS Lambda? How we'll use this function as a service, okay? These are the type of the service, but mostly these three are being used and provided by the service provider. Okay, let's move on. So if you see here, whatever the service providing and whatever services is currently being used in the market, this is a chart. If you see here, the SaaS, PaaS, and IES, this is the color, what is being used. The public infrastructure as a service being used, $125 billion. These are the in, in billion. And uh, at, by 2024, they're expecting it should go beyond six six three billion dollar okay the cloud computing market with respect to the service provider okay so these are the private cloud so this color if you see the people are still using the private clouds here okay and most of me few of them are using public cloud and these are the public SaaS, public pass and ies as i told Three services which you have to remember, SaaS, PaaS, IS. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, okay? So next, this is most important to understand. If you understand this, then it, uh, it, it will be uh, uh, permanently in your mind. So the private cloud, who will manage what? That is you need to understand now. So we talked about IAS, we talked about PAS, we talked about SAS, but who manages this? That's most important to know. So on-premises, that is, as I was talking about the private cloud, right? The private, you maintain it. All these things in color, gray color, colored, you can see here, you manage. That means private cloud will be managed by you only. All the storage, networking, compute, virtual machine, operating system, runtime, applications, everything will be managed by you. That's the private cloud. So the infrastructure as a service, you will get the base infrastructure. So base infrastructure, you will have storage, networking, and compute power. Storage, networking, and compute power. So you will get this infrastructure and the rest of the things like getting virtual machines like getting servers getting machines getting uh, installing operating systems uh, installing all those required softwares all this that is your duty because the company giving you just the base infrastructure with having compute power with having networking with have, having storage the next one is the so here the cloud provider manages. Suppose you are getting it some service provider as you are taking us IAS, that means these three things will be provided and managed by managed by service provider, cloud service provider. And 
the rest of the things will be managed by you similarly the platform as a service that means you are getting all the platform you are getting the machine you are getting already infrastructure you are getting on top of that you are getting the machine you are getting the server the rest of the things you have to just work on your application means your product you have to focus on your product so here what you have to do here you get the infrastructure but you have to focus on the platform also you have to focus on your application development so you have to spending time both platform as well as your application but in case of platform as a service you are already getting the infrastructure you are getting already the platform only you have to focus on the quality product you have to only focus on the application development and data access in case of software you don't have to worry about thing the application also will be provided by the service provider you have to only manage your data like gmail or like any kind of services where you using only like our facebook instagram only you we are managing our data right the accesses and data the rest of the things are being provided by the service provider only we are managing our data i hope it's very clear now do you have any doubt guys need to discuss so uh, no? yeah naranjit yeah. uh, like uh, saas saas right so application and all they will take care right so for example i have one uh, website like abc.com okay so yeah, yeah. Uh, i need to make it in a cloud so how can i use this service uh, saas so yeah. i need to give this application to the uh, service provider and they will take care the about the application no 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 okay. uh, you you uh, no uh, got it wrongly so okay. you don't have to provide the application to them they okay. will provide the application to you like the facebook.com right or the instagram or the facebook they provide you the facebook to use that is their application you are using it similarly gmail that is their application you are using it that means anything any problem to the software any problem to the facebook that is their headache your headache is to manage your data only that means you are just getting from the market a software like let's think about a simple thing if you are going to a medicine store uh, mm -hmm. or some or some uh, retail shop or something they are using some kind of softwares right Yeah. That is the software which is being provided by a service provider, a vendor. So what they are doing, they if there is any issues with the software, will take care the service provider. They will provide the support. But the data you were dealing with that, that is your headache. That is you have to deal with the data and the accesses, right? Software as a service, you are just getting the software and using it and paying for that. You don't have to focus on the development of data. data enhancement uh, sorry you don't have to focus about the application enhancement application development or platform or network or anything okay they have to make sure the software whatever they are giving you that is 100% of time okay okay yeah. so uh, yeah and sorry sorry to no uh, still i am little bit confused like a uh, Uh, cloud provider managers right blue color is a cloud yeah, provider yeah, right yeah, so yeah. Uh, for example aws okay mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you are given uh, some uh, example for a medical shop so, mm -hmm. so they are using some uh, software mm -hmm. but aws uh, how they know the the software names so, uh, that's uh, that is my uh, uh, okay no 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 no, no, no. don't get, don't get confused whatever example i'm giving you giving you example of the real time of the okay. real life example not mm. not just the not uh, no uh, correlate these things in the cloud that is we are yet yeah. to learn we are yet to learn those things okay okay, okay. how we correlate you will not understand until unless we go to the services right okay okay you just understand what is this meaning because i you don't know what if i tell about a cloud aws software you will not know about the software right the mm. software which you know that's why i told you like gmail you know facebook you know instagram mm. you know but that is not being provided by aws right that is provided by some other company yeah yeah we have some software which provided by aws i tell you what are those softwares and how to use it okay okay yeah thank you yeah. okay
Okay, guys, any, any other further doubts or any further discussion need to be done? Okay, so what we can do now? Let's uh, talk about, okay. So this is, So we talk about this, who will manage what now? I think we are good with this. Now let's move on. As I said, we are going to learn the cloud, right? What is this? AWS. Why AWS? AWS has taken the market share and AWS is the number one cloud service provider in the market. Number one cloud service, service provider in the market so if we talk about this let me quickly go there why we should learn aws there are as i said in popular in the market we have multiple service providers like we have microsoft azure we have google cloud right gcp google cloud platform we have Oracle, we have IBM, we have Linode, we have Digital Ocean, we have lots of other thousands of cloud service providers. So why should we go with AWS? If you see this, I already have shown you this uh, picture uh, in our last class. If you see this cloud service market currently, Amazon acquires 34% of the market share. By quarter three to 2022, it is acquired 34%. And the rest, Azure is 21% and Google is 11%. The next, as I said already, 25% and other cloud. There are thousands of cloud service providers are there. So imagine why Amazon is so popular and what are the services it provides, okay? That we need to understand first. So what is Imagine Web Service AWS? First of all, what is AWS? AWS is nothing but the abbreviation is called Imagine Web Services. The full form of this AWS is Imagine Web Services. That means it's a web-based service. They provide web-based service. That's why for cloud, we need internet connection to access the web-based. So we have also desktop application. Right? We have web applications, we have desktop applications. For freshers who are freshers who work for less pass out, they may not understand few concepts, but still try to correlate these things. If not, you can uh, ask me anytime, any questions, offline, online, anywhere, okay? You can ask me questions to understand. That's why I want to be very clear so that anything, whatever I'm teaching you should be from the basics so that anyone can understand, right? That's why I'm just designed Though it takes more times to deliver you, but still I want everyone to understand whatever I'm delivering, okay? So what is AWS? AWS is nothing but Amazon Web Services. It's a collection of remote computing services. They're also called as web services. Obviously, these are the web-based services that together make up, of, make up a cloud computing platform offered over the internet by, a, by, by Amazon.com by Amazon.com. So if you do log into Amazon.com, we'll see, show you everything today itself, okay? So AWS is a suite of hosting products that aims to take the headache out of traditional hosting solution. So the traditional hosting solution who have some knowledge on how to host a applica an application, how to host a product, how to host uh, the uh, complete solution, they may understand uh, how difficult it is to host an application. Uh, but nowadays, all the service provider, they are giving managed services. It will be easy for you to host an application, okay? I have multiple, uh, around six to seven applications I have hosted in multiple platforms, multiple, sub multiple service providers, including Amazon, including GoDaddy, Hostinger, even Google Cloud, I have hosted my own app, uh, applications which are currently running in the market, okay? So we can use 
those solutions, don't worry. Uh, once you finish, you will understand how to do that, okay? So let's see why AWS is better than the competitions for big and small users. So what it provides? It provides on-the-go pricing. What it does? It provides on-the-go pricing. What is the on-the-go pricing? As in our last class, I was talking about the go, pay as you go. Pay as you go, right? As I said, in the real time, going for to a hotel or for a room to rent, you use the room for a day and pay the price and go away. Similarly, whatever your services or the computing resources you are going to use from the market, cloud market, you have to go to the service provider, rent those services, use it for some certain period, then pay for that price. And if you don't need, close it there, come out. So on the go pricing, imagine if you see here, Amazon took a refreshing approach to pricing its hosting when launching AWS. Every service you pay for what you use. Every service you pay for what you use. The unnecessary stuff you'll not, you'll not pay for that. This makes a lot of sense for servers, server infrastructure, as traffic tends to be very busty, especially the larger sites. Traditional hardware for the most part goes unutilized for 90% of its life cycle. AWS helps deal with this problem by keeping it cheap during the slow time. This is a very good point here. AWS helps deal with this problem. See, what happens here, guys? If you have an application and you have hosted, uh, you have used, uh, you have used AWS and your application, suppose in the daytime, your market, your uh, uh, you are targeting the audience only the daytime. It's only the people who will be uh, like suppose in the Indian market. Indian market, you have uh, uh, one commercial uh, like uh, e-commerce website. Okay, you have one e-commerce applications where you are targeting Indian customer, mostly in India. So the people in India are using your application daytime, like from morning six to night, 11 or 12 a.m., 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. night. So what will happen in this time, your application will be loaded, your application will be utilized, it will be used by the customer. The rest of the night, people will be sleeping, Them very rare people will be using. So unnecessarily, why should you use more power you have also control on them so that what happened, you can reduce your cost. Rest of the night, you don't want your applications to be used and don't need that much resources to be there. So you can reduce that in the night for, for particular five, six hours. So that's why you pay as you go on the go pricing. Whatever you use, pay for that. That's the most benefit of using AWS. Okay. Now, Free tier, that is again, most important, the free tier. So other service, cloud service provider, they provide only one month or two month of services free. But AWS provides one year, complete 12 months of free. Complete 12 months of free, that's why it's so popular. Most of the people, most of the newcomers, most of the uh, uh, like uh, 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 people who wants to do something in the cloud, they just get their service, do practice, do R and D, do development in the free, okay, completely free for one year. After one year, they will charge you. After one year, if you are using their service, they will charge you. That's why that's popular. That's why people are learning more in the AWS, and they are getting chance to learn. It's good for our students. Good for other people's to learn. That's why the, it has captured the market because of providing the services free. The free tier, which provides enough credit to run an EC2 micro instances 24 bar seven all month, resolves this. Means EC2 micro, you will not understand what is EC2 and S3 storage, just keep in mind, okay? It comes with S3 storage, EC2 compute hours, elastic load balancer time, and much more. 
this gives developer a chance to try out AWS API in their software, which not only enhances their software, but also ties them to AWS, which benefits Amazon to Amazon in the long run. So it, when it provides the free tier, people are, tend to use that and they'll be in touch with the services of AWS so that the peoples are being attached long run, attached in the long term. Okay, that's the free tier provides. But in the free tier also, there are lots of terms and conditions, guys. Don't think that is entirely free. There is lots of terms and conditions you need to understand. I'll teach you each and every concept how carefully you use. If you don't carefully use the free tier also, you have to pay a huge amount for that. Okay, not all services are free. Not all services are free. Few services which are free for 12 months and 24 bar 7 free. Okay, I'll tell you what are the services are free, what are the services are not free, how carefully you use the services. Okay, then the performance. That is most important if you're going to use any services, you first think about the performance, right? So in a traditional hosting environment, this probably would have meant downtime with 400 four errors as the website have just gone down. I'm not going to read this. Let me tell you in overview. So if you think about uh, if a uh, few of them have uh, hosted any application or software or any website, you might have seen uh, if your website is running in your laptop, think about in your laptop or in, a, in your desktop. If there is problem, anything in your house, like the network goes away or your laptop go, dried off, uh, the battery uh, dried up. So what will happen? Your website will be down, will not be accessed, right? So there is a compromise in the performance. But in case of cloud, you will get 99%, 99.999% of time. That's what they claiming. All the services, all the storage, everything, whatever they provide, they guarantee for performance of 99.99% availability. We'll talk about availability later. There are lots of things with related to availability, okay? Next one is the deployment speed. How speedily you deploy the application. That is also most important, guys. okay? That is also most important. How speedily? you are dealing with the deployment, okay? So most of the time, when we talk about the deployment, the companies, in DevOps, if you see in the market, there is going on continuous deployment, continuous integration, delivery, and all these terms are there. Don't, don't just uh, crack your head there, just listen to what I'm telling. So the deployment part should be faster. We'll learn why it is faster in our upcoming slides, upcoming classes, okay? So what is the deployment speed? If you have ever heard to provision a hosted web service, the traditional providers takes anywhere around 48 to 96 hours to provision a server. To provision a server means to get a server, to get a virtual machine. So traditional way, if you go, or traditional providers that they provide, it will take 48 hours to 96 hours. It's too much, right? So then you have to spend a few hours tweaking it and getting everything tested. After even 48 to 96 hours, you need a few more hours to make your application tested. But AWS, what happens? AWS sinks that deployment time to minutes, which in traditional way, it takes more than hundreds of hours. If you're going with AWS deployment suit, it will take only merely a minute. How much time is saved? Now the time is everything, right? The time is money. So if you can save the time, you'll save the money. You'll get huge money around you, right? Because the customer wants quicker delivery of their 
applications delivery of the product in the market okay so if you utilize their imagine machine image you can have a machine deployed and ready to accept corrections in that certain amount of time i'll show you when we do deployment how quickly it gets deployed even less than minute you'll get your server ready okay and this important when for example you were running a promotion that generates tons of traffic at specific intervals or just need flexibility to handle the demand when a new product launches this deployment speed is most crucial when you are launching a new product means you whenever you're launching you might have seen whenever a new product or any kind of sales going on in the market there will be a huge rush of the customer right sometimes the traffic goes away sometimes it's so heavy traffic that the servers the website get crashed right so that's the aws which can help you on this now the next is security we already talked about the security security is the most important for any services you use and any service provider who provides the service. So access to the AWS resources can be restricted using the IAM, that is nothing but your identity access management. Using the roles in IAM, we can define the privileges for users. We'll talk about this IAM services and all, okay? So there are a few services using that we can restrict the accesses and provide more security to the things. Okay. Now let's move on flexibility. The most important feature in the AWS is its flexibility. Like whatever the flexible, like you need a server in minutes, you can get 100 servers. If you don't need the servers, you can remove those servers. Those kind of flexibility is there. If you're if your customer gets more, if you get more demands, if the demand increases, you'll get more servers. Or more computing power if your demand decreases you can have to remove those powers you can do it quickly it is very flexible to do that right here is giving one example here uh combining with the fantastic api and the imagine machine images you create you can have a completely customized solution that provisions a server instance in under 10 minutes and is ready to accept connections once it comes online then you can quickly shut down instances when they are no longer needed. Right? So if you need any servers quickly to be done, within a few minutes, you can get the servers to be ready to use. And if you don't need, you can remove it quickly. Those kind of facilities are there. Those kind of facilities are there. Okay? Sir. Yeah. Sir, I have a doubt. Um, actually, um, what's the web uh, now? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Please. Yeah, um, um, nowadays we don't need to download some things like uh, what's the web and um, like PDF to word converter like that applications are there. Um, are they any way related to this uh, cloud? Uh, if you can relate, yes, it is related to the cloud. Okay, I'll give you an example. So mm -hmm. you guys are using Dropbox, right? Few of you might have heard about Dropbox. Few of uh, heard about the Google Drive, right? Yeah, Google, yeah. Google Drive, I know. Yeah, Google Drive are few. There are many. It's not. I just gave you the few. There are many, and all the Google products, Google Forms, Google Drive, Google. Uh, what are the Google apps they are providing? All are hosted in the cloud itself. Hmm. Means so we don't need to download it. You don't need to download it. Even in cloud AWS also, I'll show you how we can store your data securely. And whenever you need, you can retrieve those data even globally. Mm -hmm. Suppose you want to keep some data in the cloud, you keep it and just share the link to the person who is in America. He can easily find those data there. Yes. 
that is the so beauty here once we start working on this everything you will understand how the storage work so the google drive is nothing but a storage solution is a storage software you could say is a storage solution where you store your all your documents right yes exactly the same thing many like dropbox also like mm -hmm. dropbox also that is also uh, kind of the stc has uh, a dropbox have uh, that 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 is also a storage solution where you can store your data put your into dropbox and keep it there and share this thing with your friends globally right here in cloud also we have lots of things and whatever you, yes whatever you told it's actually related to cloud not in aws but some different cloud service provider for for aws we have different storage okay solution. okay 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 so the next is okay. So now you understood about you understood about the flexibility and all, right? Now let's have some key terms. Why I just want to I want to finish these things today itself. The key terms. Then from tomorrow onwards we'll have services to learn. I'm going to deliver you around 20 to 20, 22 to 23 services, okay. And the e-services will take, I'll finish it in one day. Or in, in one day, I'll try to finish two services and you have to do practice. 20% theoretical and the rest of the things will be exercise lab. Uh, here I'll do and you have to do at your home also, okay? So first you have to understand what I'm telling you need to understand what exactly these things and then how we can implement this in the services, okay? And these key terms, whatever I'm going to tell you, this you have to remember and interview you will definitely get it not only in interview in the services whatever you are going to use you have to use these terms very frequently okay now region what is this region in aws region is a physical location around the world where they keep the group of data centers then what is data centers? I'll tell you in the next slides, okay? In AWS, region, just remember region, this region word, we're going to use everywhere in the AWS services. Okay. Huh? okay, sorry, go mute, please. No, it's audio. Mm. Cloud. Sorry. Sorry. Cloud Okay, I made the mute. Okay. Please uh, don't unmute if you're not speaking, guys. Okay. Fine. So the region is a physical location around the world where they keep the group of data centers. Okay. Each region consists of multiple isolated and physically separated availability zones. Then another term is availability zones. That is also in the next slides, okay? We got two terms there, data center, availability zones. AWS has 25 regions around the world and six more are going to open shortly. Just for your knowledge, just remember. In India, we have currently one region that is, that is Asia Pacific Mumbai. In Mumbai, we have one AWS region is there. Another region is already being ready, uh, going to be announced shortly, that is in Hyderabad. AWS has launched their data center in Hyderabad also. That will be another region. One region in Mumbai, another data center there or region that are going to open in Hyderabad. So what is region? AWS region is a physical location around the world. It's a physical location. You can say here, this image, if you see, it is a one location, the map, right? It's a one location where you can see these houses, buildings, these are nothing but the data centers or availability zones. So the region is a physical location around the world where they keep the group of data centers. The group of data centers. Group of data centers, it could be one or two or many. Each region consists of 
multiple isolated and physically separated physically separated availability zones so physically separated availability zones we'll talk about availability zones later aws has 25 regions around the world and six ports are going to open shortly so what is availability zone we talk about region and available each region consists of remember each region consists of one or multiple availability zone and what is availability zone availability zones are rest, distinct isolated location within an aws region yes there are 80 availability zones currently aws has one availability zone may have one or multiple data center remember one region can have one or multiple availability zone one region can have one or multiple availability zone but one availability zone can have one or multiple data center okay so these availability zone offer us the ability to operate production applications and databases that are more highly available fault tolerant and scalable i understand few of you do not understand this highly available fault tolerant and scalable we'll talk about when we work on this server side virtual machine side what is fault tolerant what is highly available and scalable let me let me tell you just have highly available means the application or the services which is available all the time like 100 percent it will never go down highly available anytime it will be available fault tolerant means it will have capability to tolerate the fault any default any defect or any fault happens it will automatically get rectified automatically get created or handled or get another service on top of that it will tolerate the fault generated there it will never get any fault scalable in case you need more details in case of more servers more machines it will get created as i said here availability zones are distinct isolated location within an aws region if you see this diagram the region will have one or multiple availability zones. Suppose uh, availability zone one, two, three, okay? Most of the region have one or three or five regions available. I'll show you in details when you do the practical, okay? So, and the availability zone is nothing but the one or, it contains one or more data centers. So what is a data center? See, how I'm doing this, I'm just breaking the, big things telling the big things first and then small small and making it so that you can understand clearly how it is okay so the data center a data center is a facility or a dedicated space within a building or a group of buildings composed of networked computers storage that businesses and organization used to organize process store and dismiss large amount of data if you have already some people who have already worked in the companies they might have seen their company will have a data center inside the premises inside the premises they will have a data center in the building they will have a uh, house or room where they have this kind of hardware and network setups will be there and this hardware network servers of setups will nothing but your compute systems servers storage memory networks everything will be there You'll be seeing right, a house of full uh, uh, restricted areas having lots of networks, cables, and everything will be there. That is nothing but your servers. That is your data center. That contains lots of storage, computing power. All the details will be available there in the data center. Okay. So edge location. Edge location is nothing but your a site that CloudFront uses to cache copies of your content for faster delivery to users at any location this is very important guys i'll give you some real example here 
there are currently 17 cloud front edge locations in india four in hyderabad another four in new delhi three in bangalore three in mumbai two in chennai and one in kolkata okay so around 17 cloud fronts are there in india worldwide there are many okay so what is this uh, edge location a site that a location that cloud front uses cloud front is a service we'll teach i'll teach you this cloud front in one day cloud front is a service you just to cache copies of your content for faster delivery to users at any location what do you understand with this slide just not entire line cache copies of your content for faster delivery to users at any location if you see this region here let me tell you one real time example here you might be watching netflix right you might be watching prime videos hotstar and all so those content those videos right whatever you are watching those are kept in a different region different location few servers whatever the netflix is using that is totally cloud solutions they have kept their movies the content that is nothing but the content right the data in a different location and we are accessing from india we are accessing from india some someone from the village very uh, down to the corner of the village or somewhere in the city also someone from bhubaneswar someone from chennai someone from bangalore they are using for some video to use what will happen suppose netflix added a new content on their site on their application and you want to watch it right what will happen if someone from bengaluru watches that video or watches that content what will happen that particular content will be buffered and cached nearest to your edge location so what will happen here suppose here in this region someone from suppose uh, bengaluru watch the content from the netflix from that region okay so what will happen the content whatever he watched it will be stored into this edge location edge location all these are the edge location it's stored right and these people these people there are supposed two people are watching one people is watching the same movie and it is stored to the edge location another people is trying to watch the suppose same movie suppose he watched pathan here anyway pathan is indian movie it will be in indian server only not in the somewhere else suppose he was uh, mission impossible something is the world and is being stored in netflix and that is being cached here in the bangalore location in india and someone else suppose i am going to watch same mission impossible what will happen i am not going to connect to region again to the netflix where that is kept in. what i'll get i'll get the same content to my nearest location from my near, nearest location that means that will be cached and stored in your location and i can watch it here so what will happen here it will be for faster delivery i don't have to my network does not have to go so far to connect to the usa or australia or uk i can directly get it from india itself so the content whatever i watch will be buffered so fast it will be delivered to me so fast now you understood the edge loki importance of the edge location in aws why the aws has created the edge locations everywhere in the world okay now you understood about the edge location these four terms whatever i told you keep it mind it you are going to use these terms entire your life in the cloud edge location data center availability zone and region definitely i'll ask questions to make it more interactive in our upcoming classes keep in mind watch the video again and again and just keep in mind and try to practice after this class is over okay i'll ask question in our 
next class, the first half. Okay, so you understood this, right? Now, what are the services we'll cover? We are going to cover this 23 services. Make a note of this or take a screenshot. Anyway, I will share this video with you. Don't worry about it all. We are going to learn IAM, Identity Access Management, Storage Services, CloudFront, that edge location, whatever I was talking about, CloudFront, Elastic Cloud Computing, nothing but your compute service or virtual machine or the machine or the server. Elastic Cloud Compute or EC2. Security Group, how we can secure your EC2 or Security Group. EBS, Block Store, Elastic Block Store, EFS, Elastic File System, CloudWatch, CloudTrail, these are the monitoring tools. Databases, we'll learn database also. We have three days continuous class on databases, okay? Route 53, networking stuff, VPC, networking stuff, load balancer, auto scaling, Elastic bin stock, that's for PAS. I was talking about right pass platform as a service. We talk about elastic bin stock, elastic IP, MAT gateway, subnet creation and understanding, ECS elastic container service, elastic Kubernetes services. These are the things container and all we talk about the pass. Uh, sorry, SaaS, C A S L, CAS, right? CAAS, Container as a Service, ECS, EKS, all this. And uh, SES, SNS is, these are the software as a service, SaaS. SES, these are the softwares, SNS, okay? Simple Notification Service. And we'll learn at last the Lambda Basics. Lambda itself will take two to three months, two to two months of time if I come to uh, entire Lambda. We can learn entire Lambda, but it is required Python knowledge. It is required strong Python knowledge and not like programming. So we cannot go with Lambda only. Uh, basic Lambda about what is Lambda and how it is being used, how the API is being covered. We'll just do that. Okay. So all these things are we are covered. So the course is designed from basic level to master level. Okay. Basic to advanced level with all details I'll share with you. Be tuned for next three months and you'll be mastered definitely by end of this course. Any doubt, anything, you can ask me anytime. You can WhatsApp me. If I am not able to take your call, you can WhatsApp me. I'll see it in case uh, immediately I can help you, okay? So that's all guys for today's class. We are almost done, maybe. Uh, we'll see in our next class.